it going there, everybody? My name is Samuel Fisher from Green Dispensary Marketing. Good to be back with you guys again with another guest on our show. This is Patrick Rogers. He's the CEO of Cannabis Photo. He has got some very exciting news and uh, ideas for us in the realm of uh, cannabis marketing. I'm very excited to talk with you, Patrick. How are you doing today? Doing well, man. How are you doing? Doing all right, man. Uh, just a busy week. Uh, wrapping up 420 last week. Uh, had some good uh, success on our end. Um, how about you? Awesome. About the same. Just uh, I didn't have a whole lot going on for 420. We actually uh, went for a vacation with my kiddos for, um, to visit some friends in New York. So I kind of took the holiday as a holiday and just uh, enjoyed some time with my family. Hey, there you go. Yeah, that, that's. I think that's the best best way to do it as opposed to be working, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, let's jump right into this, Patrick. I'm really excited to talk with you today. And so you, you reached out to me and I, I, I've never actually seen somebody or a company like yours that specializes just in photography for cannabis. But I'm, I'm interested in learning more uh, from your perspective. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about you? Um, in your journey as an entrepreneur before we jump into your company? It's been difficult. Uh, I So I worked for a few different, uh, I worked in a few standard jobs. I, I started with the Art Institute of Chicago as being a um, digital imaging technician, I think my title was. Uh, then I went to um, Yale uh, to photograph for their rare books and manuscripts library for about a year and a half. And then I went to Harvard to photograph for their rare books, uh, the Beinecke Library for a while. Um, I enjoyed it, but I also knew that I wanted to do more than just, you know, I got, I got my taste. I, I worked in an office and it was fun, but I also wanted to do more of my own thing. Um, so in 2010, I started, uh, the, the contract at Harvard ended. So I started the business I actually started as wedding and, uh, wedding and family photographer, but then I moved to architecture. And then when things became legal in Massachusetts, I started doing, um, offering cannabis shooting as well so cannabis and architecture is what i'm shooting right now that's that's really interesting um, actually most people probably don't know about me i used to work as a wedding dj so we might have actually if i was in massachusetts <laughs> we might have been working at some of the same gigs way back when no maybe <laughs> <laughs> It's so that's interesting though. Why, why, what made you get into the cannabis industry? Because I know uh, wedding photography is it's not the most lucrative thing in the world, but I, 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 from what I know, you can get some pretty good money there. So to, tell me a little bit more about why you jumped into cannabis. It can be fun. Wedding photography can be a lot of fun, uh, and I enjoy the energy of it more than anything. But it was also a matter of I can't stop anything and say, "Hey, wait, wait! Can you do the first kiss again?" I, I, you know, there's someone that was picking their nose in the background. Can we redo that? So. I, I wanted a little bit more control um, and weddings were, I found that the, the most enjoyable thing I enjoyed shooting about the wedding was um, the reception. That's where all the energy is happening. That's where a lot of really genuine interactions are happening and a lot of people watching. I mean, I like, I like watching people and I like photographing people. So I, I got into that. Uh, I realized that was a big thing that I really enjoyed. So um, I moved into shooting architecture. Then things became legal in Massachusetts back in 20, uh, 2012, right? I'm not sure on the date of that. Want to Google it? <laughs> uh, when things, yeah, whenever things got legal in Massachusetts, I, I decided to start growing in my basement and said, uh, I've honestly never really seen the plant. So after looking at it and watching it grow and enjoying the experience of that, it was, this is a pretty plant. In addition to everything that it does for me and does for everyone else, it's a good looking thing to shoot. So I started shooting it on my own and then I said, I can help. Like I, I, and looking around the Instagram, looking around at what people post online for uh, cannabis photos, some of them are really lacking, and I knew that I could fill a need there. So um, I wanted to both support the industry and support a plant that has been extremely beneficial to me and to many others in my life and their lives. That, uh, and I wanted to support that. So both, both exploring something a new, cool subject to shoot, but also supporting an uh, industry that I really believed in. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, actually, th this week, I don't know if you saw one of my posts. I try to post every business day. Um, somebody commented. It was actually a CEO of some cannabis brand. I forget. Um, I don't want to look it up right now. But he was mentioning to me, you know, I look at all these cannabis brands, um, and their, their, photo, their photos are just like these stock photos that they pull from uh, the manufacturer. They don't have any sort of unique element to it. And so, absolutely. There, there is absolutely a huge need for you right now. Um, but in, in your opinion, what, what role do you play in this industry? Um, to kind of touching on maybe what I'm sh just talking about here. I'm trying not to talk too much about myself because I'd rather stay in the background. 
but uh, this is a podcast and it's about me. So yeah, um, it's about you. Yep. Yeah. I, I want to elevate the brand as it in general, reduce stigma of the, of cannabis as a, as a legitimate way for, uh, to support mental health and uh, support people's journey and finding happiness and finding contentment in their content, uh, contentment in their life. So I found it really important to do that. Um, I just want to support everyone and I, I want to elevate the brand. That's a, that's a big thing is like you said, and like I've, I mentioned earlier that the photos are lacking and I've seen, I'm not going to call anybody out, but I've seen photos that were put up there by growers that said, check out this new strain that it is dropping this week. And they post this photo that is an eye, it's shot by a phone <laughs> on a, a piece of paper. And it's just a bud dropped on a piece of paper with, with little flower bits all over the place. I'm like, you've spent realistically, you've spent years bringing this plant to life. Uh, not this one specifically, but all your experience, all your years of growing, all the mistakes you've made, all the pheno hunting you've done has led to this moment. And you're dropping the ball by taking a photo with your iPhone and not showing its true beauty. And that's really frustrating to me. Like, I, and that's my job. Like, you're a grower or you're a CEO or you do what you do the best that you do it. I don't do my own taxes. I don't do my own accounting because I'm not good at it. So bring me in to show off your product and your hard work and your people. Let me do what I do best because you can't. This is and now I'm, no, a, no I'm, I'm sorry. This isn't actually, we didn't plan to discuss this, but this raises a pretty interesting point. Um, what, what ways do you think that you could highlight? Uh, so you see some, for example, for example, a stream they're posting on their iPhone. Um, uh, somebody who's not a photographer What's the difference between an iPhone camera and what you do? I Like I said earlier, I used to shoot weddings. And people used to say, wow, that's a nice camera. I bet it takes nice pictures. Well, there's also a dude behind it that knows what they're doing and how to, how to handle it. So you can take good photos with an iPhone, provided the lighting is better. Provide, I mean, there are, things that, there are things that you can do to elevate what you do. But you have to have the eye for it and the experience for it. And I'd be happy to help wherever I can. To, I'm, I've helped a couple companies to try to figure out what they can do without paying my rates. Uh, not that I'm trying to you know, make myself go out of business, but I also understand that I'm expensive and I don't need, uh, you know, you can, people can't always afford me. So I'm happy to teach you what I can to do that, to, to present your photos better, your, your hard work better. So uh, that was a long winded way of saying that iPhones can do the job if the lighting is better, if you pay attention to what you're shooting and not just like you think about all the photos that most people take when they take a picture of themselves or people at a, at a, an event or whatever. I see it all the time where they shoot it and there's so much empty space and so much negative space. Zoom in, get closer, zoom in with your feet and then go walk closer to the subject. The iPhone can handle close up shots to a decent degree. You use that. Just spend an extra 30 seconds in thinking about, does this, is this the best I can do? And if it is great. And if, but if it still looks like garbage, then call me and I can either consult with you or shoot it for you. Ideally. Yeah. So let's jump into this. So tell me a little bit more about the services that you offer. And so obviously you take, I'm, what kind of packages so are you offering right now? That's it's, it's changing. I'm in the middle of a little bit of a change because I realized recently that I can, I can't compete with a bud tender with an iPhone. I like to do many, many shots because I know how to do them well. And I, I mean, like, as I mentioned earlier, I shot for Harvard and Yale and Art Institute of Chicago photographing things on a copy stand or things that were still. And, you know, I, I, I am very good at getting getting a photo to make it look like the thing that it is. <laughs> um, and there are other people in this industry like uh, Zoom Gardens does really good um, trichome shots. He does really, really awesome shots of really close up photos. I'm more trying to move toward shots like what's behind me here, um, showing people using the product, showing people telling your story. That's what I really, really want to do because, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the menu shots I can't compete with a uh, bud tender with an iPhone. If you have a new strain that came out this week, you've got to put it out right away. They, and I'm not available till two weeks from now. You don't want to wait that time. So have your bud tender shoot it or have someone shoot it with an iPhone, make it look his best. Um, it's not ideal, but make it look its best and move on. 
Uh, there's a lot of bud product shots out there that I'm trying to get away from because I'd rather tell a whole, a bigger picture, bigger story of the people that use it, where they use it, uh, the people that grow it. Like there's a lot of things that, I mean, uh, was it 10, 15 years ago when there's a big uh, push to support your local organic farmer and go to farmer's markets and talk to your farmer, have a relationship with them, know how it was grown, know where it was grown. This, you know, these tomatoes came from 10 miles away and that was Steve that grew it and Sally was helping him out. You know, like it's, it's a whole story that you want to be a part of and you want to support that person, that story. So that's my job now is to tell that story and to show off what you do, how you do it and who's involved. And does that resonate with me? Like I, I had a recent shoot at a, um, I took a few folks out to a disc golf course, for example, we hung out. We uh, did a few holes and uh, did a few bowls at the same time. And it was a matter of this is a lifestyle. These, this is how cannabis fits in in a variety of different ways, right? Yeah. And so when I kind of hear you talk, one of the things that's kind of screaming in the back of my mind is branding and how you could kind of help dispensaries with their branding and in return also with their revenue. What, what would you say about that, uh, your role in helping them with branding and revenue? I've been talking to... Matthew Harold is one of the people I've been talking to recently about this, this exact question. Um, uh, he works for Headstash Marketing and we've been doing some talking about how I offer a part of the puzzle. He offers a strategy, he offers a big picture, and I'm the one to say, to execute his vision for, their, for, his, for his client. I would rather stay in the background as much as possible, shoot what I can, tell a story, um, but I am, it's hard for me to work with some companies that don't have a marketing department. And that's, that's very much lacking in the cannabis industry, at least in Massachusetts. Uh, Mello does it. I've worked with Glenn at uh, Mello. He does a great job at, I produce the content and he pushes it out there and uh, schedules it appropriately and helps it tell his, tell their story. I'm not as, not always good at telling the uh, branding story. I'm good at presenting what you want. Uh, but it's it requires working with a team to put this out. It's it's hard to like like I'm IKEA. I, I give you the give you the stuff, but if you if these photos end up on a hard drive and you never do anything with them, and that means you don't see my value, and you're not going to hire me again, and you're just going to think, well, I guess I'll do it myself, and because that didn't go anywhere. This is part. I'm giving you the components, and it takes people like. Glenn or Matthew to, to put these things together to make it a whole or you, I mean, I, I haven't worked with you directly, but that's what, that's your job is to tell me what you need. I produce great content and you push it out there in the, in the appropriate time and place. Yeah. I think another one of the realms that you, if you haven't already entered that you might be thinking about entering would be this kind of like the online world of these CBD stores, the Delta stores, the, the ones that ship nationally and in some cases internationally. Um, what, what about them? Do, do, do you have any role or do you think that you could help them out with their branding and their revenue? I would love that. That's, that's the fantasy. And honestly, that was, that was my long-term goal for this, for getting into the space is that eventually I want to end up that it's federally legal and that someone from Arizona can ship me a box of whatever, of flour and uh, whatever vape pens, whatever they have. The dream, huh? And I can take them somewhere and go shoot them. Uh, either shoot the product by itself, shoot it in a uh, kind of stylized product shot, or shoot it as a lifestyle shot with people. That's the fantasy, and that so that I do not have to be place specific. I had a client in Maine who was very hesitant to um, work with me because of their uh, they didn't want me to cross state lines. And I'm realistic, I mean, yeah, that's that makes sense because I had to cross through. Not that I did this or anyone did this, but uh, if I was to do this, I would have had to cross through New Hampshire, which is a, uh, is not completely legal right now. So it's that, that raises issues of, well, I can only shoot Massachusetts because nothing can shoot. It can cross state state lines or I drive to Maine and hang out for a day and shoot whatever they need, which I'm totally open to doing. But, uh, your, your bigger question was helping a, a larger corporation to, or a larger company to, uh, help them. I'd love to do that. If they could ship me their stuff and I could shoot it, I would, that would be the fantasy. Uh, yeah. because not always regional, some regions just can't support, uh, my, me basically. It's hard. It's a hard reality I've been facing recently that it, Massachusetts is not as, um, has not been as 
profitable as I thought it would be. So that's why I'm pivoting to doing more lifestyle shooting. Yeah, well, that's awesome. You, you also kind of brought up a funny point. Uh, being from Colorado myself, we were, as you know, we were one of the first ones to drop the bomb. And so, you know, we, we were, all of us, uh, when we were traveling across state lines, uh, in the back of our heads, uh, we, we, not just in the back of our heads, we would all be discriminated against and get pulled over just with the Colorado license plate tag. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't have anything in the car, man. Like, you go yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's definitely a fear, isn't it? It's, I mean, it, it brings me back to the days of Prohibition when I was growing up in, in Ohio. And, like, I every time, you know, whenever you have anything on you, you're hyper aware of what you have. And that sucks, man. I, I just want to I want to support this industry because it's worthwhile. But it sucks that it's that the, the situation we're in. Like, if you, yeah, like you said, if you leave Colorado, I forgot I had a joint in my bag because I just have a joint in my bag regularly. <laughs> I think uh, this is kind of, kind of getting off, off on a tangent here, but I think one of the reasons that people often say that marijuana makes you paranoid um, is often because of this prohibition. It's like, oh, in the back of your mind, you're worried about the police or somebody coming to get you, you know? What do you think about that? Yeah, totally. That's, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back on track here. Let's talk about cannabis photo. Uh, so I was just saying that with a weird accent there. Sorry, I speak Spanish as well. Cannabis photo. Uh, how do you stand out in the industry? What, what, what would you say? I think I was, I've been thinking about this question a lot recently, a lot before you posed it. It's, it's been on my mind. And I think one of the ways is that if you are a friend of mine on Facebook, if you follow me on not Facebook. If you are, if you follow me on Instagram and my photos stand out in your feed, that's what makes me stand out. Like if you notice them, then I'm doing my job right. And there's a lot of, it's funny because I scroll through Instagram frequently and I'm, several of my clients are on there and they don't credit me in the photos because I sold them the photos, whatever, it's no big deal. But uh, I scroll through and I, I've, there have been times where I've stopped on my photo. I'm like, wow, that's a good shot. Oh my God, that's my shot. <laughs> so that's what I want to, I mean, that's what makes me stand out. There's a lot of stuff that's, there's a lot of stuff on Instagram that goes by. And I'm, I, I have to say this, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a minute and talk about how much I hate these boobs and bong shots. I'm tired of seeing some hot chick <laughs> in a bong. I'm like, come on. I'm like this is this is not we're not on the we're not there anymore. Let's move forward and treat this like a real industry with I'm like not it's not just twenty three year old women wearing, you know, ba bathing suits that smoke weed. There's a lot of people that use it for pain relief. Let's shoot those people, photograph those people, sorry, and uh, show that this is a wider Part of the community but this is a wider part of the world that uses cannabis and finds benefits in cannabis uh and that's what i want to document i'm trying to reduce the stigma as much as i can by working with people that aren't boobs and bongs you know because it, it's it's it needs to be more than that um how do i set myself apart it's experience and having having an eye for photography i mean there's a lot of people that this is another issue i kind of have with the industry where there's a lot of people who get into it that don't know exactly what they want to do for the industry and they just end up being photographing for or like end up being social media generators, whatever. Some of them are awesome, but some are like they they resort back to that safety net of I'm going to shoot some hot person smoking weed. That's it's, it's just like a classic barking strategy that sex sells. You know, I think that's maybe that's why they're just depending on that over and over and over. But you're absolutely right that we should, should be focusing on other aspects. I know I got into cannabis. So I have scoliosis. I have chronic pain. And it's helped me out massively. Uh, with, yeah, with what I and that's what. Go ahead. That's sorry, I cut you off there. Oh. I and that's what I'm trying to. Sh I want to shoot people like you that have pain or have that use cannabis not just to get high, dude. You know, like we need to get away from that and show there's a, a, a variety of the population that uses it and finds benefits in it. So let's work with that. Let's work with that story and say. We're a, we're a dispensary in, I don't know, in somewhere that where there's a, a retirement community close by or something like that, you know, where there's a, a constituency that's not um, not 23 year olds. Let me tell that story. And also, like, that's my I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that when you're looking at weed and when you're looking at uh, your Instagram feed, do you relate to someone that's 23 year old, uh, the 23 year old hot chick that's smoking weed? No, because you're not. This is not what you're coming to it for. So I want to be able to shoot people that uh, you can relate to, that I can relate to, that that aren't just about the sex and are about the 
benefits of this product. And I, I like, this is why I take pictures because I'm, I'm not the best communicator with, with words. <laughs> um, think about the things, you, the times you've bought a cool product. Like, and I bought an Apple Macintyre, um, an Apple uh, laptop a while ago, a couple years ago. And as soon as I bought it, a few days later, I saw it. Well, probably it was probably 30 minutes later, considering their rotation. But the an Apple computer uh, and Apple commercial came on TV. I'm like, I that's I can relate to that. I just spent money on this product. I want to feel a connection to this brand. And they're doing cool stuff with their computer. I know I can do cool stuff with my computer. I can relate to that. But when it comes to weed, there are so many people that can't relate to what these images that are being put out there. I want to shoot something that people can relate to, so that these dispensaries can increase their connection to the community. Yeah. And so I was going to follow up, uh, kind of ask it for some unique solutions. I think you just covered that uh, really well. Uh, so excellent, excellent answer already there. Uh, just a couple Thanks. more questions that I also wanted to kind of show some of uh, your work for the audience that are watching the video. Uh, first of all, what, what, what do you envision for the next three to five years, the cannabis industry? What, what do you think is going to happen? What was your crystal ball say? I, I really am dreaming of the, Federal, federal legalization, that that can happen because I I would love to have a studio in some remote place up in Maine on a few a bunch of acres where I can have my honeybees and grow my plants and have people mail me stuff and just shoot these products. I mean, shoot it as a lifestyle, as like in a studio lifestyle product shot or not um, as a product shot in a studio. Uh, and you'll see some of those photos that I've taken to show off that in a minute. But also, obviously, to shoot lifestyle. But uh, I, that's the fantasy. I don't. I mean, I don't know where it's going to come. I don't have a crystal ball. I wish I did. But that's my fantasy, and that's why I got into this because I want to support this industry for a long time. There's yeah. so many benefits that, uh, yeah. That's I don't know. That's that's my thought on that. Yeah, I think we'll get there, and I think uh, people like you are kind of helping us kind of establish norms. You know, you're you're a smart person. You're well educated. You're well read. All that sort of stuff. And here you are. It's like, are you a criminal? In my opinion, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I almost was like I, I had a back in my college days. I, I I'm sure I can say this now because of how long it's been. But uh, <laughs> I had what is it eight eight of Olympia's finest bust in my front door to arrest me for selling weed, and that oh, was like yeah. yeah, that's if they had it's a long story there, and I'm happy to share it with anyone that wants to talk about it. But uh, if you want to share right now, you're welcome to if you're comfortable. If they. I had sold out I, like I was going through and I wasn't some major player, but I was going through a decent amount on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, coincidentally, there was a party happening that night at a friend's house. And I decided that I didn't, I, I got tired of so many people coming up to me and asking me for weed when I was at the parties and stuff. And I just hanging out. So I just, I didn't feel like it that night. So I sold out the night before <coughs> and then was planning on going to this party that evening. But that's when the police busted down the door and tried to get me. But they, I had like an eighth of personal weed on me. That's it. Had they come the day before or the day after, I would. I'd, I don't know if I'd still be in jail, but I would. I'd have been in jail for a long time. And like, just think about the luck that happened there. And I was not. Like, I'm not a criminal. I've never done. I, yeah, it's so to think about the idea that I could be in jail now because of that was is really just it's wrong it feels wrong to me and the people that are like you uh similar personality yeah. similar lifestyle or like myself that are actually in jail have been in jail for decades it's just insane i'm i'm a contributor i'm a good person i do good for the world as best i can like that's why should i be yeah it's that's a and that's another reason why i want to decrease the stigma is like there shouldn't you need to see that it's not just some loser stoner hanging out on the street corner smoking weed you know it's there are people that find benefits in it and that's what I, that's another reason why i'm trying to show different images than what post most people see yeah absolutely well one more fun question that i'd like love to see some of your work uh, what, what's your favorite cannabis product i i've been listening to your podcast over the last couple of days and watching your videos and that's that's as soon as i knew that was going to be a question skywalker og Oh, I grew yeah, that. that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. A buddy of mine gave me a clone of that. It's, <laughs> he gave me a clone of that maybe two years ago, three years ago. It's been a while, but I, I grew that and uh, I only had one clone. I only got a few ounces out of that, but man, that was, that's, there's, 
I, so I've named my company, my Instagram handle is Giggle Grass Photo because that's what I want out of weed. I just want to giggle. And Skywalker OG makes me feel happy and giggly. And that's, that's, it's a mental health thing for me. Cannabis is mental health. Uh, it helps my mental health. And that's, I just want to giggle and Skywalker OG. Uh, I grew purple haze once that, that helped me out. Uh, pineapple haze was probably one of my, uh, so the top four, not in any particular order, Skywalker OG, pineapple haze, purple haze, and, um, uh, gelato. Those were all, they're fun to grow and they were very beneficial, <laughs> but it's ideally it would be a blunt or a joint sitting by a campfire, hanging out and smoking. That's, that's the fantasy. That's, that would, that'd be an ideal evening. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. I'd love to see some more of your work. Um, if you want to share your screen, really yep. interested to kind of show it, not just for myself, but for the audience Most as well. Definitely. Kind of see what, see what kind of photos you do. Work you do. So, um, as I mentioned, I have done product and I like to do that uh, when I can. Uh, let me. Yeah, while you're doing that, my, my favorite cannabis product, I actually had I stopped smoking. Um, I just do, I make my oils and consume that way. Okay. Let's see. Nice. Let's see this. All right. So this is a shoot. Uh, speaking of mellow, I talked about Glenn at mellow before I've been trying to shoot more lifestyle stuff. Like I said, this is, they invited me in to show off their, uh, drying process to show it to, well, they invited me in to photograph stuff for them. And this was their drying room. And it was, uh, and this is one of the things, this is a thing that I kind of want to show off too, is that, uh, what just what goes into doing like being a business owner being a grower like what does that look like because i've never known how big these operations are what happens in them so it's it's been really fun to kind of peek behind the curtain um the cannabis is in that picture or the, these pictures you know i asked them but i don't remember it's i, I don't even i can't even think about how much this was it's that's a lot like yeah. pounds and pounds and pounds <laughs> hundreds of pounds probably i'm not i don't know i'm not a good estimator of size but uh i'd say i don't know pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds yeah, and pounds, pounds. Yes, um i mean this these ceilings are probably 25 i don't know 20 feet high i i don't know uh maybe 15 to 20 feet high and they're floor to ceiling worth uh, hanging on nets and um i mean you can see how how tall this kid guy is but uh, that's another thing I try to do in my photos is I try to hide people's faces as much as possible, not for pro prohibition, but who knows how long uh, people are going to stay at different operations. So I try to make my photos be a little bit more evergreen in the sense that you can use them. Like if that employee uh, leaves, leaves your company for whatever reason, it's not going to be, you're not, these photos will still be usable. Oh, yeah. I can't tell exactly what that is. Um, so this is one of the things I like to do for lifestyle or product tennis shoots. Uh, and then as I was mentioning earlier, um, I do some that are in studio kind of showing off the really cool product, um, uh, in a different and maybe a different way or more, maybe a little bit more of a traditional way like in the that. sense yes. that, yeah, thanks. In the sense that it's not just, uh, a joint on a white piece of paper or, you know, a pile of a pile of weed. This is trying to present the uh, product as more of a as a normal product. Like this is this this could be regular chocolate. This shot could be for regular chocolate. And I'm trying to normalize the way weed looks and not always have it be, um, you know, as as we've talked about before, boobs and bongs and stuff like that. What is that cup? Can you go back to that? What what is that? Oh yeah, this was a um, the last one. Commonwealth Alternative Care won a won a prize for best uh, concentrate. Uh, I think he yeah, has a knee can cup. So <laughs> the, the guys in the in the lab were got all our stuff together, and they said, "Hey, what if we poured it over the like? What if we bunch of put a uh, poured a bunch of this over the uh, into the cup for our solvent?" I'm like, okay, so <laughs> we dumped a bunch in the in the cup and uh, had a had a blast. I, this is one of my favorite shots, uh, yeah, and that's it's a like, beautiful one. This shot would not have shown up if it wasn't for people that wanted to collaborate with me and wanted to tell me this and wanted to show, hey, I mean, people have good ideas in your company. Let me listen to them. Let you listen to them and let me tell your story through them because they see this stuff and they come to this with a whole bunch of, for a whole bunch of different reasons. Uh, people work in cannabis. So let's work together to tell that story. And yeah, I did some shots for Fernway uh, quite a while ago. 
um, and was trying to, sometimes I try to deconstruct the project, our product and say, well, this was, this has notes of cran cranberries. So, I mean, it's, it sounds a little too uh, on the nose, but let's get a pile of cranberries and shoot it. And this, this could look like a commercial for someone else. It's not, not, uh, not a cannabis company. So yeah, I love doing these type of shots where I kind of hang out in the studio and just create stuff, but I also like to do the lifestyle shots. Uh, whatever I can do to support the industry is what I'm what I'm trying to do at this point. It's all really great, great work. Do you want to show anything else? Or do you just want to move on? I think that's good. Yeah, I'm sure that's representative of what I can do. This is Patrick Rogers, everybody. Uh, really great to have you on the show. I'll leave your contact information in the description and uh, in the description below. Uh, anything else you want to uh, say to the audience? I just let me help you. I want to tell your story. Let's work together. I want to, I, I love what I do and I think it shows. And uh, I'd love to turn my lens toward whatever products or uh, people you'd like me to photograph. Awesome. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate your time, Samuel. It's, it's been, this has been great. It's uh, I was a little nervous, but uh, this is great. Thank yeah, you so likewise. much. I definitely wish you all the best. I'm um, excited to see some more pictures. Post them on LinkedIn, man. Will do. Will do. <laughs>